Good afternoon, I'm Brian Reagan. This is Tyler Kelly. And today we're in Isaiah 14 as we continue our studies uh, through Isaiah with our midday meditation. And Tyler, if you don't mind, read Isaiah 14, verses 12 through 17. These are the Satan Lucifer verses. How you are fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. How you are cut down to the ground, you who weaken the nations. For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation on the farthest sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Yet you shall be brought down to Sheol, to the lowest depths of the pit. Those who see you will gaze at you and consider you, saying, Is this the man who made the earth tremble, who shook, the king who shook kingdoms, who made the world as a wilderness, and destroyed its cities, who did not open the house of his prisoners? All right. So you have uh, a lot of things going on here. Um, First of all, in its immediate context, this is about the king of Babylon. Um, I think it's, I think, me personally, I believe prophetically it's looking forward to Nebuchadnezzar. That God will spare Nebuchadnezzar, uh, as is recorded in the book of Daniel, when for seven years he goes about like a wild animal eating the grass of the field because he did I'm the greatest thing since sliced bread I'm the god of everything you know but now after the seven year thing Nebuchadnezzar ever, never ever opens his mouth or moves contrary to faith where God's concerned um, some people say well you know Lucifer is not the correct translation of the Hebrew okay um the day star, the morning star. Uh, but then Jesus is also called the day star in Peter. Um, so if you're going to try and be overly literal, then uh, you're saying Jesus tried to overthrow the Father and that Jesus is actually Satan. Um, and that's just, wow, that's, that's poor exegesis and stupid. Yeah, um, I'm kind of in a mood on some of this stuff. What does the word Lucifer mean? Lucifer goes back to Latin. Uh, Lucifer was known as a light bringer uh, in the Roman Italian peninsula. And so this choosing of the word Lucifer, it does go back to Jerome. That when Jerome had to choose how to translate this into Latin, he understood that this is one that gives what appears to be that day star kind of light, but in opposition and exaltation against the creator of the heavens and the earth. You see, Satan does have plenty of light. The problem is all of his light is borrowed and he's twisted every bit of it so all of his light is darkness. But to the worldliness of men, he looks like a light bringer. And the simple fact that Lucifer and his followers have embraced the term Lucifer, that Christians argue that that's not a valid name for the devil. Really? When Satan and his followers embrace the term that came from Latin for a false god, as one of his names, you want to say that that's not valid. Uh, General MacArthur, pretty much most of his life, he went by General or Sir. You know, even though his birth name was Douglas. Um, but look what he says. I'll ascend to heaven. I'll exalt my throne above the stars of God. This was a human agent operating with and in agreement uh, under Satan. A man can't overthrow God, but Satan can try. Satan did try. didn't work out. But what has Satan been doing? Satan's getting, been getting men to overthrow and rebel against God. Oh, wait, since the garden. 
This is, this is what it is. And you can get bound up in the whole loose. The Hebrew allows for the designation of the term Lucifer once you understand Lucifer was a Latin proper name for a false god that Jerome, brother Jerome, when he translated the Bible out of Aramaic, Greek, and Hebrew into Latin, the Vulgate, that was the common man's Latin, hence why it's called the Vulgate, so that they would understand that that was what it was referring to, that this was a human man acting under the control and guidance of the evil one. And, and Tyler, this is one of those when people in the church will argue with me that this is clearly not about just any normal human, that there is a spiritual reality at operation behind it. When the children of God will argue for Satan against the word, when most of them can't read Hebrew, let alone Latin, but then in the church we can't figure out how come we can't beat the devil. You have some other thoughts on this? I liked what we said this morning when we were reading out of um, Thessalonians. First Thessalonians. Yeah, First Thessalonians. Mind your business, get with the word of God says, and stop arguing. It would make life a whole lot simpler and the same idea was true way back when with Isaiah and it's like stop following and doing all the stupid things that God told you not to do and following what Satan is trying to do to bring you into rebellion against God. Yeah. You do understand there's a problem when you argue in defense of the enemy of your soul. Mm -hmm. So for those of you who've been arguing and saying Lucifer is a bad translation, the King James people didn't know anything. This goes back 1,200 plus years before the King James people, y'all. Who doesn't know stuff? Quit defending Satan. Directly or indirectly. Quit defending Satan. Doesn't matter what name you call him by. He's still the adversary. He's still the blasphemer of the brethren. Lord willing, we'll see you back tonight for Twilight Talks on Faith at uh, 8 o'clock. Yes. Until then.